Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Hannah from the Instagram My Skincare Regime, where I post all things skincare and beauty. I also have a blog where I post in depth reviews. In this video, I'll be discussing and showing you skincare products that I stopped using. Now, a bit of a disclaimer just because these products didn't work for me, that doesn't mean they won't work for you. I believe skincare is very personal, so don't let me put you entirely off these products. They just didn't work for me one way or the other. Now let's get on with the video. The first product that didn't work for me is the Ordinary's Buffet Copper Peptide 1% Serum. Now, this serum contains peptides and in particular, copper peptide, hence why it has a blue colour. This is supposed to be a cheaper alternative to the Niod CAIS2, which contains 2% copper peptide. I found with this product, however, that I really didn't like the texture of it on my skin. The problem I find with a lot of the ordinary serums, not all, is that they're quite gloopy, as you can see here. If you've seen my previous hyaluronic acid video, I think this is because their serums contain one form of hyaluronic acid, and therefore it sort of makes the product thicker than it could be. I find that this product doesn't play well or layer well with the other products in my routine. It kept balling up and ruining the layers, so I had to stop using it. Also, I found that this somehow stung a bit on my skin. It gave me a sort of uncomfortable feeling and therefore made me conscious that I was wearing it, which I don't want in my routine. A good alternative to this product for those on a budget and in terms of wearability would be the Dear Claire's Midnight Calming Serum, as that also contains copper peptides and the texture is extremely watery and would layer well under SPF and makeup and it doesn't give me a weird stinging sensation. Or you can go for the more expensive option, which is the upgrade and is the CAIS2 from Niod, as that is also watery, but pricey. Now onto the Hadalabo Hyaluronic Acid Toner. This is a toner my friend got me from Korea. I was super excited to try it as I really like Hadalabo. And of course, they are famous for the Hyaluronic Acid Toners. This is a massive tub, it's extremely watery and contains hyaluronic acid. I really wanted to love this. I put it on my skin, however, and instantly began to smell something, and I couldn't quite put a finger on it. And then I realised what I was smelling, which also made sense as to why this product sunk in so fast. I checked the ingredients, and there it was. Yes, unfortunately, there is a large amount of ethanol in this product, and that was what I was smelling. Personally, I don't want alcohol in my toner. I'm fine with alcohol in SPF, which I mentioned in my K-Beauty SPF video, link down below. But with the toner, I don't want the first thing coming into contact with my skin to be alcohol. I hope this product has been reformulated, which I believe it has been, and I have replaced this item with the Muji Toner for Sensitive Skin, which contains hyaluronic acid and no alcohol. I will include it in a future video, so stay tuned, and watch out for my review, which will be on the blog. The next product is from Huxley, and this is the Secret of Sahara Anti-Gravity Cream. Now I thought this was going to be a light, easily spreadable and almost gel-like cream. I've heard Huxley are a good company, so I was excited to try. But honestly, as soon as I opened the tub, I knew this product wasn't for me. I was hit with a wave of essential oils. This smells so strongly of a garden, like walking into a garden. And although I like the smell of plants and flowers, I don't want that smell on my face. And then the texture of this thing. Wow, it is thick like it's sheer butter. I'm not the fan of heavy creams because I feel like it's suffocating my skin. I can feel it sitting on top of my skin and I don't like that feeling. I do think drier skins would appreciate this though. I should also mention that I applied this on my face and instantly it made my neck itch. So that was strike three. Next up is the Niod Flavanone Mud Mask. I do think people either love this or hate this and unfortunately this was a pass for me. This is supposed to be a really good decongestant, but I think for those with sensitive skins, they should really avoid this product. It is very strong. I know the instructions let you know that when washing this product off, your skin will sting, but I found that sensation really unpleasant. It just made my skin very hot and sting a bit. I thought it would be easier to use this over time, but it still brought a painful sensation to my skin. So I do think something that's better for sensitive skins is just sticking with the Ordinary's AHA BHA peel and using that once a week. 
It doesn't provide a stinging, irritating sensation like I found with this mask. And it'll still help decongest your pores. Next up is the Neogen Vita Duo Cream. I so badly wanted to like this. I ordered it as soon as Joan came out with this cream. I love the idea of a 2-in-1 AM and PM moisturiser duo in one tub. But alas, I should have had alarm bells ringing when Joan said she loved the smell of lavender in the night cream. Because yes, this is essential oil heavy. Also, this is extremely difficult to open, might I add. I wish the tab was bigger. As soon as I managed to get the lid open, I was hit with the smell of essential oils. I mean, wow. And instantly, I can tell that I prefer the night cream to the day cream, as I prefer gel textures. But why are the creams coloured? I guess it's to distinguish that one cream is for the AM and the other is for the PM, but it's not necessary. The night cream looks lush. If you don't mind essential oils, this is a lovely feeling cream. It's refreshing and hydrating. Although I'm confused why the thinner textured cream would be used in the PM instead of the AM. You'd think it'd be the opposite. It does look nice on the skin. The day cream does contain a vitamin C derivative, but it smells like lemongrass. I also think it contains green tea for antioxidants. The day cream is much thicker, and it's very similar to the Huxley anti-gravity cream in texture. It's very sheer buttery like, which I'm not a big fan of and it sits on top of the skin. Instead of these creams, I prefer, for a gel texture, the Etude House Soon Jung Barrier Cream, and if you want a cream-like texture, then the Glossier Priming Moisturiser is a much better option in my opinion, as they are unscented. Review is down below on the blog. So there you have it. There are loads more products that I've stopped using, and if you'd like to see them, then please give this video a big thumbs up, and please like it. If you agree with me or disagree with me, please comment down below. Or what have you stopped using? Bye!